What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Juno Ryan coming at you with my good friend Chris Lowe. You probably see him in my videos, see him in Victor's videos. But today we're going to show you guys how to make a jig or actually more specifically Chris is going to show you how to make a jig, specifically a flare hawk jig. He makes his own, uses these to catch snook, redfish, tarpon, really anything that's going to eat it. It's pretty simple and I think you guys would actually really like to see this little process. So. Without further ado, Chris is gonna go ahead and show you guys what he does. All right, what's going on guys? I have my own, as Ryan said, my own flare hawk mold. I had it made from some company up in, I think in Virginia. I use an 80 extra long, extra strong mustad hook. I like the 80 because it doesn't straighten out like other people wrap their jigs with 7-0s and you can see, um, the hooks just bend out on tarpon. They bend out if you snag something. Uh, it's, it's just, it drives you nuts. Ryan said he's had his bend out when he's unhooking a fish. That, that drives me it's nuts. Garbage. So I spend the extra money and wrap with the better hooks. Uh, the color that I'm gonna wrap with right now, I'm gonna do a white body with a blue tail. As you can see on this one, I do a little, a light blue tail. They have been hitting pinfish a lot recently. And if you look at a pinfish, they have the white body with the blue stripes on them. So, match your bait with what bait they're eating. <clears throat> That's what I'm gonna do. So, just throw this in my mold right here. This is a vise, um, I don't know the name of this. My dad got it from somewhere, couldn't gotcha. tell you. So it just holds the jig head it Holds in place. the jig head, this tightens it down so it doesn't move at all when you're trying to wrap. This is pretty much just your basic thread wrapper. Um, I buy all my thread from Michaels. It's a craft store. I'd, some people say thread matters. As you can see, I wrap some jigs with white, some with black. When it really comes down to it, these fish are hitting this on an impulse bite. It's just gonna be zooming by them. They're not studying this for a long time, so they're not gonna look at all your imperfections or what color you have. First light jigs, they paint their heads. I don't bother painting mine because pretty much all the time, you're gonna lose this in probably five casts. Yep. So if you're not snagging bottom, you're not fishing them right. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't take the time to paint them. It, I don't think it makes a big difference. And besides, if you look at this first light, the paint just chips off when you bounce off the rocks anyways. So you can take that painted head garbage and throw it out the window. Nice. I like it. What I'm going to do is a lot of people, they'll, you know, to start, you kind of want to measure it out to see how long you want your hair to be behind your hook. I do it about that long, so there's about an inch to inch and a half behind the hook. So you already have the thread started on yep, the jig head? Yep, I started the thread. You just twisted it a couple um, so times pretty on pretty much. It. Here, I'll start over and You're show good. you. So pretty much what you want to do is, and if you build fishing rods, it's going to be the same wrap that you do for fishing rods. So you start by just doing two this way, and then you just cross over the end one like that. And what that does, it just secures it on there. So gotcha. you do two forward, and then you just, the third one will be all the way at the end going back down. And what that does, it just locks it on there. It doesn't let it slide around or anything. So you just wrap a little bit on there like that to make sure it's good to go. And then you're gonna trim. I do small sections. Um, so I do a little, little group, something like that. Just hold it on a jig right there and just do a couple wraps and there you go that's it uh the so tighter that's one little section of that's one okay. little section so a lot of people if the old school days before the flare hawks came out people fish bucktails and they didn't have a whole lot of flare to them it's just deer tail just straight on the hook with a little tail off of it these are what you call a flare hawk and you get the flare which would be the puffiness like that so when you're just going through the water it kind of goes like that you get that, that by your jig having a bigger back back here, which you wrap your thread against and actually make it puff out. So the tighter you wrap this thread to that back wall, the more it's gonna make that hair stand up like that. Some people like a more puffier jig. I know Victor said he likes first lights, how they're not as puffy, they're more kind of streamlined. More, more streamlined. Um, May matter, may not. Who the heck knows? Fisherman's preference is, might just give you more confidence. If the jig bite's <laughs> wide open, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Uh, we, ain't, we ain't finding no uh, wide open jig bite out here though. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So pretty much you just keep cutting small sections and you wrap it on like so. And you just work your way around the jig. 
you know. I'm sure every guy that makes his own jigs has his own little methods and little uh, little yep. nuances to how he makes his own. But this is a it's just to give our viewers an idea of how easy it really could be to make your own jigs. Yep. And they don't really have to be anything fancy to go ahead and catch fish. Okay, so I have it wrapped all the way around. So I'm wrapping real tight against that back wall like I mentioned earlier, which is gonna give it this flare, the flare hawk, the actual puffiness. So now the tail. Um, you have a couple different options as far as your hair goes. You have crimped hair, which you can see here. It kinda has some like waves going through it. That'd be crimped. Um, this is also crimped. And then you also have straight hair. So straight hair has no crimps, it's just dead straight behind you and the difference is to me the straight hair just kind of just sits behind it it doesn't have a whole lot of movement compared to this crimped in the water it kind of like waves um, I've caught fish on both but as far as the actual body goes I like to use the crimped hair because it really gives it that kind of puffiness look to it on bigger underwater. profile bigger profile whereas the straight hair kind of clumps together more and the straight hair works great as a tail because it just it kind of clumps together and just goes right over the rocks and if you do it in shallow water you can see the difference in the tails so so get you a big clump here it's probably seven eight inches okay every inch matters that's it and you just wrap it on the same way as you would all the other stuff. And when I do it, I hold all this behind and I start all the way at the back here. And I just work my way up. Oops. So you just pretty, you pretty much just wrap till your thread just disappears. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm not selling these in a store. I'm gonna lose it on a rock. So as soon as I know that I have enough thread on there to hold all the hair on there, I'm good to go. Um, the finishing is probably one of the most important things because this is actually what holds your hair on together. Um, so again, if you build fishing rods, it's gonna be the same way that you would finish wrapping a guide on with your thread that you're gonna finish this. So you wanna get you a piece of braid or an uh, extra piece of, uh, piece of your old thread and you want to cut you a good piece and you're just going to fold it into two like that and you're going to lay this the way that I do it is I use the eye as like a little mark you're going to lay it right over the eye like that and you're going to start at the top and you're going to do six wraps all right so you got your six wraps you're going to cut that and then you're just gonna put it through like so, and then hold it tight. So you took your tag end from the what you wrapped a million mm -hmm. and one times over the bucktail, and you're just gonna put it through that loop that yep, you just created. Yeah, you're gonna created. put it through that that loop that you actually wrapped down on, and you're gonna grab it like so, and all you're doing is pulling it back through. Nice. Okay, so once you have it through. You could just pull it tight, which will snug it, and that's it. You can leave it just like that if you want. Um, you can cut your tag end off like so, and that'll actually hold. Um, I've wrapped a lot of jigs doing like that. Some people like to put a little dab of crazy glue on it just so that, to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You can oh. do that if you want. I don't usually do it, but I have it here, so we'll put a little on there and that'll make sure that that thread doesn't go anywhere. Um, but some people will actually, I know a lot of cobia jigs, if you see that, they'll epoxy over the thread. Mm -hmm. And that's for sure not going anywhere. So once that's done, take it out. And one thing I like to do is I hold the tail away and I go like this and I just trim to make sure everything's even. Gotta make it a little beautiful. Beautiful things catch fish. And once you're done with that, you're good to go. There's your jig. Good to go. There's your guaranteed rock catcher. Guaranteed. We're going to snag that on a rock later and maybe the inside of a fish's mouth. That's it. That's all you need to do. 
All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you to Chris for showing me, showing you guys how to make these wacky freaking lures that so, for some reason fish eat. I don't know. We'll see if we can catch some of these fish afternoon, this afternoon. See you guys in that next video. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, man, no problem. All right, talk to you guys later.